question again talks about the constituency of the party. There was a point in time when the Democratic Party included a significant number of white middle class working voters. Many of those people now vote Republican. Many argue against their economic self-interest. How do you and the party get these people back under the Democratic umbrella? And James Averhart, you're first with this question. It's a great question. What I see, because I talk to everyone, I don't just focus on black votes as well. I talk to everyone because they are, are a voter. When I talk to people, individuals who are Republicans that used to be Democrats, and some have come back over, you know, as I've spoken with them, again, they have lost the trust and the confidence in the party. You know, they saw things that they don't believe in. They saw what they thought to be divisiveness. They saw, they talked about racism. Yes. You have Caucasian men and women talk about racism that they see. You know, I don't think, you know, I think racism comes about with ignorance, and that may be another subject, but when I, when I talk to those individuals, at the end of the day, they have lost the trust and the confidence in the party. Rick Collins? Yeah, I was, I would have considered myself independent 15 or 20 years ago, and, and uh, I moved, started moving away from any idea of the Republican Party, environmental issues, and health care, and, and on and on. Um, I think, my belief is, the Democratic Party is poised to really take over the landscape of the country, and I say that because the Republican Party is very narrow and very ex exclusive and uh, there's not room for, for people. If you, don't, if you don't line up with the views of the Republican Party, and I'm not going to bash the party any further than this, but that party has really uh, become exclusive, and I think the Democratic Party has a, has a larger tent, and I think ultimately the Democratic Party will, the next 10 years, I think it's going to be a big wave, a blue, a blue wave in this country. Thank you. Kiani Gardner? So one of the things that our party has not done well historically is to challenge some of the national narratives. This narrative that as a Democrat I don't believe in God. I challenge that. This narrative that as a Democrat I couldn't possibly have sound economic policy and understand how tariffs work. I challenge that. One of the things we do as Democrats is we challenge the narrative and we talk about the issues that matter to voters. And as we keep drilling down on the fact that that toll was a tax, don't let them tell you otherwise, on the fact that you deserve to see a doctor when you need to see a doctor, on the fact that your children deserve to come out of high school ready to enter work or enter college, when we talk about those issues that matter to every family in Alabama, we will find that voters will want to vote on issues. I say this very frankly to my Republican Alabamian brothers and sisters. Voting for a Democrat doesn't make you a Democrat. Vote for the person who has ideas and policies that advance your life. Vote for someone who wants to make your life better, who wants to invest in your bottom line, and who wants to create a better Alabama for all of us. If we push that message and say, just because you fill in the circle next to my name, that does not mean you switched parties. It means you put your loyalty to your family and your home above your loyalty to any of these nebulous national parties.